Um, let's go ahead and move to the desktop. Um, you'll see the installer. It's called XG Setup. <coughs> and um, you can run it by just double clicking it. So we'll say yes. Uh, and this will run us through a wizard. Um, and we just want to accept all the defaults and just have the software install without making any modifications to the installer. And so that will take a minute and we'll see that some icons get created on the desktop uh, when we do this operation. Again, we're just going to run through the installer using all the defaults. And at the end, it's going to ask us to reboot. Uh, probably a really good idea. Uh, for purposes of this demonstration, I'm not going to reboot uh, just for time efficiency. Once we've installed the software and we reboot the machine, um, the software will come up and uh, the first thing that will pop up is a registration wizard. If you're an existing GMN customer or have an Xgate account, you can go ahead and select enter pre-assigned username or password. If you're a new user and want to purchase an account from us, you can go ahead and say create new account. Uh, if you just want to evaluate the data with uh, no string attached three free day demo, uh, which is what we're going to do here, uh, you'll just sec select register for three for free three day demo and then you'll hit next. Um, you have a selection now. You have the option now of installing the drivers and configuring the satellite phone. Um, but we're not going to do that yet. Uh, we can do that now or we can do it later on after the program's been installed. Right now I'm just going to say that we're going to connect over the internet just to test things out and make sure that we've got the software installed correctly. And then we're going to come back and install the um, drivers and configure the satellite phone for use with uh, our email program. So we select that. We accept the terms read the notices, um, put in some information about who we are, it wants some phone numbers, um, and uh, it wants an email address. And then at that point we should be able to go ahead and yeah, I want an alternate phone number, so let's go ahead and enter six five three seven nine eight seven two three again, which is our number here. And let's see if we, oh, it wants it wants a billing address. So um, two six eight Jericho Road, Maryville, Tennessee three seven eight zero three, which is our address here. And um, at that point, uh, the software will go over the internet. It'll tell us that uh, we have registered the demo and that our email address is this funky strange number at gmn-usa.com. Not to worry, it's encoded in the software and so when you send out an email, it'll be in the reply to address uh, and you can just reply to any emails that you send uh, to uh, send it mails or you can write that number down and uh, use that number to send yourself emails. So we've registered, we we'll go ahead and finish and at that point the GUI will come up if I hit the start menu, um, I see that uh, indeed we're able to do a session. We've contacted the server, we've checked for mail, um, we've received an email from the server, and everything looks like uh, it's working okay. Uh, and so uh, we'll come back to this here in a minute. But uh, the next step is to go ahead and configure the um, system for um, use of data over the iSat phone. So the first thing we want to do is we want to um, plug the iSat phone in and make sure that uh, the iSat phone is connected and on. We will then go to the program menu in Xgate and we will select modem and dial-up installer because we need to configure a modem and dial-up installer in order to communicate and make a dial-up connection that's going to connect us to the internet. So we'll go ahead and run this program We'll accept the terms and um, we'll come to this first hardware installation page. If you have not installed the drivers for the satellite phone at all, this is your first time ever connecting the satellite phone for your system, um, you can go ahead and do that and Xgate has all the drivers for most common satellite phones including the iSat phone. And uh, you can go ahead and there's a USB help here. We'll just describe how to install drivers for the different versions of Windows. Um, we've installed the drivers already. 
However, uh, as, as of this date, the modem driver f delivered by Inmarsat on the Inmarsat CD doesn't quite work correctly. And so we have a replacement driver that is required in order to be able to do data efficiently over the phone. And we need to replace the Inmarsat driver. So I'm hoping that by the time the software is released in the future, this step will not be required. But for now, in the beta version, in the beta testing version with the drivers that we have and the version of the firmware that we're using, we must remove and change the modem driver. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, there's a nice handy button here called the device manager. So I'm going to push that button. That'll get us to the device manager. And under modems, you will see that there is an iSat Phone Pro modem installed. So I'm going to do a right mouse click on that and I'm going to select uninstall from the list. It's going to ask me then if I want to delete the driver and I say yes because I want to remove that driver and all its files from the system. And so that modem has now been replaced. Now I need to reinstall the driver so I'm going to scan for hardware changes and we notice that the modem has now appeared there's an exclamation point next to it which means that it is not functioning properly and the reason for that again is because there's an issue and if I click on that it'll tell me that the driver software was not successfully installed because there was no driver found which is fine now I'm going to go ahead and do a right mouse click on this particular device and I'm going to say is update driver software and I'm going to get this um, wizard I'm going to browse my computer for the software and um, you'll notice that I've already preloaded this with wireless.drv which is a folder on drive C uh, on your installation you're probably gonna to have to click this browse button you're gonna go and open up my computer you're gonna open up drive C on my computer and you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna select this wireless.drv file this folder, wireless.drv, has drivers for different satellite phones, including the iSat phone. We're going to make sure that includes subfolders is checked. We're going to hit next. Windows is going to tell me that this driver has not been logo certified, which it has not because we've recently modified it and not gone through the logo certification. So we'll go ahead and tell it to install the software anyway. And at that point, the software now has been successfully installed. You'll notice that my modem is back. If I do a right mouse click and go to properties on the device, you'll see that the device is working properly. If I click on the modem tab, you'll see that the modem has been installed at 2400 baud, which is the correct speed. If you see a speed other than 2400 baud there, you're using the Inmarsat drivers and uh, your data will not work unless you take steps towards uh, either replacing the modem drivers or making some changes to the settings in the Inmarsat drivers um, to do data. So we're done. We've updated the modem. We can close the device manager. Back in the wizard, we can hit next. And um, we get to the <coughs> screen which allows us to install the actual dial-up drivers for the Inmarsat phone. We click quick install. and wait a few seconds here. Uh, the software is now probing the serial ports looking for satellite phones. It probes all the ports for a variety of different satellite phones and in a second here it should say your iSat phone driver has been successfully installed. Please push next to complete the installation. And we're now done. We're ready to actually do an email session over the satellite phone. So um, a little bit about Xgate. Um, Xgate is a program that optimizes email transmissions over your satellite link. It works in two parts. It has a part which is an offline part which is used to create and um, read your emails. Once your emails are created offline, then you go online only long enough to send and receive any emails from the server and then your connection is disconnected. So <clears throat> this panel that we're looking at right now it's the main dial-up portion of the panel. It's the main GUI for Xgate, which uses to control the different functionality. You notice it has a toolbar, and on that toolbar, there's an icon, which is the email icon. If we click on the email icon, this is the first time we've run this, so this will bring up the email client. The email client runs in a number of different languages, so you can pick your language of choice. 
It'll ask you if you want this to be your default email client. Tell it not to ask you again. We're going to say yes. And this is pretty much a standard email client, much like you've accustomed to using. It has an inbox and outbox. Uh, here's the demo email that we received congratulating us and welcoming us to our three free, three, uh, day free trial. Um, to create an email, uh, we would click on New Email. We would select an address from our address book or type one in. Give it a subject and uh, type in a message. Hello, here is my first iSat Phone Pro message. And then you hit the send. Now when you hit the send, you've actually not sent this over the satellite link. You've just queued it up for, um, for transmission when you go online. Um, you know that you've got mails queued up for transmission. If you look at the system tray, there's a little icon there with a mailbox flag going up and down. That means that you have items that are ready to be sent. At this point, if we hit the start menu, um, everything has been configured to go ahead and send the um, data over the satellite phone. Before that, I'm just going to do a sanity check here and just show you our options and how that's configured. If you go to options and you go to settings, you'll notice that this is your assigned username and your password under the gateway icon. If you click on the connection tab, you'll notice that the default connection has been set to iSat Phone Pro with a type of Inmarsat. So, um, if you have different satellite devices here or different devices, different wireless devices, you can go ahead and select the default connection, network connection being the one that we use originally to establish our network connection. But uh, everything is okay. We're just going to use the iSat Phone Pro here to send our data. So we're basically almost done at this point. If we hit the start button, you'll notice that we're now connected to the device. If you look at the um, face of your satellite phone, you'll see that you're dialing phone number 28. Phone number 28 is um, the uh, short code that Immersat has assigned to the data service. <coughs> it takes about a minute for the um, connection to establish and uh, the, the, hand, the, the lines to negotiate. And then you'll see that our email will be sent. So here we go. We're off, now we're connected. We're currently in the authentication process. So we're 20 seconds into our connection according to the timer on the front of the phone. We're now 33 seconds into the connection. We're authenticated. Okay, the Windows firewall, firewall the first time comes up telling us that we're connected to a public network, so we select public network. We close that. We're now authenticating against the server. We're about a minute into the call right now. We've sent our email, the one that we just typed in. We now check to see if we have any emails pending on the server. where there's no mail to be transacted, and then we hang up the connection. So there you are. That's how you do data over your um, iSat phone using our Xgate email software. So I hope that you found this video instruction, in, this video instruction valuable. And uh, until next time, this is Lewis at Global Marine Networks, signing off.